anybody catching a load of what this Cleveland Cavaliers football line is right now? Uh, you want to bet the NBA in the final week of the regular season. Good luck. Uh, we're here to, uh, to give you the updates here and let you know what the hell is going on. Uh, and more importantly, I uh, hope we have enough time uh, to tell you who's not playing here tonight because that's really the storyline in the association. And uh, nobody knows about uh, not being available quite like Brian Power in the house here today, as is double R1L, Steve Merrill, ready to roll here. I mean, I'm looking at this board. What a difference a couple of hours uh, makes in, across these games here. Now, we do have a lot of second of a back-to-backs, obviously, here. We've got some interesting games with Phoenix and the Clippers we'll get to, Minnesota and Denver. You know, if you you looked at these games a month or so back, we'd be like, this is a loaded card here tonight. But what we've got here is a whole lot of ass, uh, big ass night in the association. Now, BP, what do you do on uh, this time of year? You got to be a little careful here, but how do you approach some of these numbers like Memphis and the Cavs? 18 and a half, 19 points right now is what you'd have to lay with uh, with your boys there in Cleveland. You got to be, you got to pick and choose the spots here. Uh, Joe, I will answer your question in just a moment, but a couple things. Number one, the words load management, not in my vocabulary. I am always available when you ask, buddy. And then number two, what is the difference between hot ass and big ass on the card? Because every time on the show, we either have a hot ass mm. card or a, or, or a big ass card. So I, I, I'll wait for your next time around, I guess, for a clarification there. Sure. What am I doing with these big lines that we have, like with Memphis and Cleveland? I'll tell you exactly what I'm doing. I'm actually looking at the team totals on the underdogs. Mm -hmm. As horrific as some of these teams uh, you know, look on paper, last night, Portland, who I think we would all agree is a very lousy team, uh, I played them over their team total. And I know Andy Lang had that. I know a few other people actually on the site had that. It barely cashed, but there have been some other games in the last week. There was I took Detroit over a team total in the last week, Atlanta over a team total. What we're seeing is, you know, because we had all those unders after the All-Star break, guys, totals are lower. You have these insane spreads. Cleveland and Memphis might be the most insane spread of the year at 18 and a half. Now we're even seeing some 19s pop up. It's not hard for even the worst teams in the league to score 100 points, Joe. And that is an angle I have been looking at because it is tough. A lot of these games are unbettable. But if you're looking at these underdogs who the team total is so low, I have been finding now since the start of April that there is value in that market. So, you, so team total approaches uh, seem to work. For you this time of year how about you uh merrill because we were just laughing that you know that cleveland line up to 19 uh some of these totals also are pretty funny with what we've seen movement wise over the last couple of days what, what advice do you have for people looking to get it going here this uh you know last couple of days of the regular season some of these games mean a lot to teams but some of them are just off the charts it's really my the same advice I use every day of the NBA season, Joe. It's you got to be selective. I mean, I average maybe like one yeah. one play every other day during the NBA season. You know, maybe one play a day, but sometimes I don't even have a play. So, yeah, that's a crazy line in the Cleveland game, and I'll, I'll break it down in a second. But it's not a game I'm using tonight. You know, you can pass. The, the tricky thing with the odds makers, yeah. the one advantage you have as a better in all of sports is they have to put a number on every game. And you can pick your spots and just find those weak spots or those good situational plays. And for me, the NBA is all about situational handicapping. Um, so it really doesn't change much for me. I mean, we get load management all season. We get key players sitting out. We get uncertainty all season. And a lot of times, seven out of the eight games, you just got to kind of scratch them off your list because of the uncertainty and you pick your spots. Maybe there's a few less spots this time of year, but I found two best bets tonight. One side, one total for my clients. You know, there's eight games. That means there's 16 sides and totals to choose from. And I like two of them. So that's just kind of how I roll. Um, by the way, I'm going to call it official now. We're going to call this the contrarian play of the day, and that's the Cleveland Cavaliers. Um, some yes. of the metrics I'm looking at, uh, the <laughs> Grizzlies are a very public dog in this game, Joe. 
Yet, as you pointed out, this line opened 16 and a half. It's up to 18 and a half. And the sharper books out there are the ones that have gone to minus 19. Um, I'm going to call this the contrarian play of the day, the biggest favorite of the year. The Cleveland Cavaliers, surprisingly, are the contrarian. And how? And they're definitely contrarian. They're three and eight straight up in ATS their last 11 games. They've only won three of their last 11 yep. outright. And they've got to win by three touchdowns here. So, hell yeah, we're going with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Um, it's tough. Mem- the one thing about Memphis is they're awful offensively with all these injuries. And we do say this a lot in college football also. If you're going to lay the big number, you don't want backdoor cover potential. And we talk about that with bad offensive teams in college football. I think it somewhat applies with basketball as well. Um, it's harder for them to keep up. And that's kind of when the floodgates can open when you have trouble scoring. I, I mean, this, this list of Memphis who's out, there isn't anybody even questionable. They're just all out, out. Grab a jersey. If you go to the game, you might have a chance to play for the Memphis Grizzlies. Uh, it's here a no-test tonight, travel but situation 19. as well on top of that. So I guess exactly. that is a factor. Yeah. <laughs> Awful, absolutely awful. But hey, 19, if you feel lucky here tonight, the contrarian gods certainly are here. Now, we do have uh, a couple of games here to let you know. We just learned uh, about the Clippers and Phoenix. Clippers sitting everyone. They did beat Phoenix last night here. I'm not seeing a whole lot different for Phoenix except for this line movement, BP, because I know. You broke this game down earlier in the day, and it was at a totally different number here. I saw three, three and a half this morning. It started creeping up to four, but we just learned Harden out, Kawhi's out, Paul George out. Uh, and I guess after winning last night, there's really no reason for the Clippers to push anything, having uh, kind of clinched their seating here. And for the Phoenix Suns, uh, now it's eight. Uh, you After that 10-point first quarter, you trust in Phoenix here tonight? Well, uh, look, when I set it over uh, before I broke it down on Wager Talk today, the line was three, like you mentioned. Still liked it at four, which is where it was at noon. Now it's unplayable at eight, eight and a half. I mean, you don't want to go chasing. I mean, that's just a massive move. I acknowledged on Wager Talk today, did not think Harden was going to play. Didn't think Leonard's going to play. Now, but now with George out... Obviously, the Clippers are waving the white flag. That was part of the handicap, right? And I believe if Dallas were to lose to Miami in the, uh, which is the first game of the national deep, deep, uh, doubleheader, then the Clippers legitimately have zero to play for down the stretch. I think the only way the Clippers fall out of the four seed is if they would lose out and Dallas wins out. So that's something betters need to keep an eye. Like this line's going to go up even higher if Dallas loses, because it will then be official that the Clippers are locked into the four seed, nothing to play for. They're already resting three guys. Look, Phoenix, I get they're an untrustworthy team, Joe, but I said it when Andy Lang, you know, had his follow-up question. I said, at some point, there's got to be some sense of professional pride here. The Suns last night, were losing 35-4, to or whatever it was. You're playing the same team. You're trying to make the top six. I mean... I guess we're going to find out if the Phoenix Suns truly do care at all about getting into the top six tonight uh, because, you know, if they no show again here, then obviously they don't care. But I I would think they are going to show up. Maybe just play them first half now because if they ain't covering early, Mm. they ain't covering this number late would be what I reckon. No, and, and uh, you know, even first quarter, uh, you got to imagine they, I mean, Booker after the game last night, his comments uh, were just priceless, how pissed off he was. Uh, the fact that they dug themselves such an embarrassing uh, hole there now, of course, they're going to have to deal with the Clippers on their own home court. And the Clippers kind of playing uh, with house money here. 222 is what I am seeing in a total in that one. And I also... I want to remind those of you uh, joining us here live today on the NBA Afternoon Update. We certainly appreciate you hanging with us. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that like button. Shout out uh, to those hanging out with us uh, on Instagram as well as YouTube Shorts. Uh, Of course, uh, the crazies uh, on our usual uh, YouTube channel. We appreciate you. Twitter, uh, X, whatever how we call it these days. A uh, big shout out to you as well. And uh, also, uh, if you're watching this on replay, don't forget, we have links in the description to all the individual game best bet and previews that we have here at Wager Talk. So if there is a certain game uh, that we're not throwing up at here on this show, 
You can click it right there in the description and get all the information that you need uh, right down below. So take advantage of that. While Merrill, I would imagine if it's early, great. If it's not, I I mean, what part of the Phoenix Suns here or this Clippers team could we possibly trust here tonight outside of probably a big effort early and often here from Phoenix? So I think the uh, betting markets are onto your line of thought because the first quarter mm-hmm. line is now the same as the opening line for the entire game a few hours ago. So that's how much this one has moved. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this game opened three. It was actually one overnight. DraftKings had minus one overnight. Mm-hmm. It was three everywhere else. Now it's eight. And the first quarter line itself is now minus three for Phoenix. And the first half is minus Jeez. five. So you're paying a big premium. You're paying almost half the game for the first quarter alone, Joe. So I think the logic is right, but the price has been factored in um i do think phoenix shows up tonight though and yes they were embarrassed when i looked last night it was 53 16 and i was like what the wager talk live odd screen is acting up again but it was right and um it's just insane that they could get blown out of the gate like that and you do say do they have pride do they care but the fact that it's the same team that just did it to them last night i do think they'll care and they should care about the seating i know teddy keeps saying these teams don't care about the seating whatever They care about making the playoffs, and you're not in the playoffs unless you're the top six. You're in the play-in round otherwise, Mm -hmm. and you have to win one of Mm -hmm. those two games. You win the 7-8 game you're in. If you lose, you got to beat the 9 winner, the 9-10 winner. So it's a huge – you're playing 82 games. Why take that chance? You're a game out of the sixth spot. Um, So I like Phoenix. They're going to win the game. Yes, it's pricey at eight. Um, But if you know the team's going to win, which I think they will, um, it's lay it if you're going to play it regardless. Yeah, I uh, I kind of with you there. I know catch you slipping in the house. Uh, the Clippers uh, gave him a, a little extra uh, cushion there in the in the bankroll by backing them uh, last night. I can't imagine anyone that might have been holding on to an over ticket last night, which was what two thirteen to two twelve and a half BP, something along those lines. Uh, I knew a few guys last night that uh, were all about the over in that game and then watched Phoenix (laughs) drop 10 points in the first quarter. And, yeah, that was – and they still scored, what, 60-some-odd points in the first half, the Clippers, and it still couldn't get over there, BP. Yeah, and the the thing is, too, when you look at the game last night, yes, Phoenix fell into that massive hole, but they got within seven – by the fourth yes, quarter, yeah. so that's something else to consider. That obviously, you know, I mean, you know, over the last three quarters, they were the better team. It was just an when you see something like that. Steve joked about looking at the odd screen, seeing what the score was. That's an outlier performance. It's just something that you yes. just, you throw your hands up and say that ain't gonna happen again. Uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah, you, you, I think we were all in agreement. It's Phoenix or pass here. Kind of like the Celtics yeah, not total, attempting a free throw total. last night as a road favorite at Milwaukee. That's never yes. happened. I yes. still don't see how that's right, Joe. It said it's never happened in the history of the NBA. I can't believe that's right. That's crazy. It is. Absolutely it crazy. Is crazy. Yep. Uh, yep. Especially given the roster and payroll on those teams. Kind of shocking. Uh, especially because they're uh, the best team do in the league. Ha- <laughs> I mean, that's uh, well, insane. <laughs> that's what's, we'll re- that's what's kind of crazy here. Why do we uh, – yeah, we're still getting uh, all sorts of uh, records, bro. It's amazing. Uh, to me here with how long the NBA we we do this we've seen it with Major League Baseball already this year a guy throws a no hitter like three days into the season oh that's the earliest no hitter we've ever like how are we still breaking records in these sports is beyond me here Uh, it really really is Um, also we've got well let's talk about another game here the Milwaukee Bucks and the Orlando Magic this is also becoming one of these games where good luck figuring it out who the hell is playing and who's and who's not? We know Gary Harris now out for Orlando. He was just uh, he was just removed. Jonathan Isaac, Markel's Froats, Frogs Wagner did not win last night uh, or did not play last night. They could have used him for Orlando, uh, and that didn't work out well there. He is questionable. Patrick Beverly is probable, but then go down the list here. Uh, Giannis and Middleton are out once again in this spot for Milwaukee. Orlando, I, I mean, this game has got some juice here, BP. This is a game that uh, we all thought Milwaukee was just going to lock themselves into that number two seed. Eh, uh, all right. Uh, now Giannis, uh, they were all happy the MRI came out and apparently no 
Achilles. Uh, it, but we all know what that. Well, if you get an MRI on the calf and the Achilles, guess what's going to happen at some particular point here, BP? You're going to blow it out, and that's going to be the end of it. So a lot of concern, I think, for the Bucks, but they are taking on Orlando that's dealing with a whole lot of injuries themselves. I am seeing two for Orlando as a favorite, 214 and a half on a total. Uh, what were your thoughts about this one, since we have an idea at least who's not playing in this? In terms of the side, I think I would lean Orlando. Milwaukee got its big win last night in front of a national television audience. Do they, all right, it, it, Phoenix. I'm with Steve. They should care about being a six seed because there's some there's some really talented teams you're going to deal with seven through ten in the West. Where Milwaukee's at now, they're going to finish top four. Yeah, they obviously can't finish one. Boston's had that wrapped up eons ago, but they, they're going to finish top four in the East. Milwaukee, which means home court in the first round. Okay, you finish second, that means you get home court in two series. Theoretically, you should care about that. I wouldn't be surprised if the Knicks jumped them for second. I got the Knicks power rated as the second best team in this conference. Ooh. Orlando, though, Orlando, they're trying to just get home court for one round, right? And I think that's a big deal for a young team because if Orlando, or as good, great as Orlando's been against the spread, if they don't have home court in the first round, is anyone really going to trust them? Probably not. I know the markets move towards the under here. That may now <laughs> Milwaukee uh, defense is always an option there, but Orlando's very good defensively. So with mm -hmm. all the people out, we could you know I, I, that might be worth a look. But you've missed the best of the number there. Orlando, they're in a back to back as well. They lose to Houston, a Houston team that you would have thought maybe had kind of packed its bags, had nothing to play for, obviously eliminated from contention. I think Orlando shows up here. Not a client play or anything, but they would be my lean in this one because I think that you look at where these teams are at the standings, Orlando a lot more tenuous solidifying a top four seed than Milwaukee uh, is uh, to, you know, Milwaukee's good as far as top four, and they still might finish too. Who knows? So it, it's in yesterday. We had a conversation here on the show, uh, Rob Vino and I, Merrill, about. Listen, no Franz Wagner, and we were hesitant against Houston, uh, especially it being Houston's last home game of the year. Uh, they have pretty much played themselves out of the playoffs. Uh, but, you know, what you were expecting a big effort there. That was a pretty big game for Orlando if they had any hopes of moving up uh, in the seating here, and they couldn't get it done. Still don't know if he is going uh, tonight. They could certainly use him. Uh, so what do you do here? They are a favorite on the road. Looks like Lillard is still playing here as far as we can tell. Yeah, and I mean, they're not going to fall down to the ninth, 10th spot because they're nine games ahead of the, the ninth place team. But they're only two ahead of eighth, only one and a half ahead of seventh. And once again, I think it's very important to avoid that seven, eight game because you do have to win just to make mm. the playoffs still. Um, I don't think they're worrying about that, but this game does seem a lot bigger for Orlando. And the fact that Milwaukee sitting Middleton, sitting Giannis uh, tells you that. And like Brian said, it was a huge win for them. I gave out Milwaukee on wager talk today yesterday when they were a two-and-a-half-point dog. They closed as a three-point favorite. Um, I did a standalone video during the day when they were still a dog, and I recommended them. I liked them. I thought that line was fishy. And when it closed minus three, it showed me it was fishy because we're getting five points in closing line value. Um, looks like the opposite situation tonight, but I'll take a different approach to this game. First of all, Orlando has really been struggling defensively. They allowed Houston to shoot 52%. They've got 51% or more now in three straight games. Um, three of their last four have gone over. All of those games, they've allowed 47% or higher. Like you said, Lillard is not on the injury report, um, so he should be getting a lot of points and a lot of minutes tonight with Middleton and Giannis out. Uh, that's being priced into the over-under. It's currently 27.5 for total points. Um, to put that in perspective, last night his total was 23 and a half against New York. It was 20 and a half. Um, but what's interesting, Joe, is if you look at his last 10 games, his totals have been around 23, 24. There's been three times it's been much higher. He had a 27 and a half against Toronto on April 5th. He had 36 points. He had a 27 and a half against the Celtics March 20th. He had 32 points. And then before that, 29 and a half, he had 31 points. So when his total is a couple baskets higher, like tonight, he continues to get into the 30s. Um, I think the odds makers are onto something. My only concern with Lillard over props would be if Milwaukee really tosses a towel, maybe they pull him second half and they just put everyone in as a backup. But otherwise, he should get a lot of touches and a lot of points tonight, especially after scoring uh, just 12 last night in that Celtic win. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's a good approach. Uh, big time here. I mean, there are some angles you can take. 
with some of these uh, games here. And uh, a lot of, like uh, BP said earlier, a lot of team totals, uh, a lot of first quarters, uh, you know, first halves, those types of things here. I know we got uh, Joey Smokes in the chat room there watching on a cell phone there in YouTube shorts. And we appreciate you swinging by there, Joey. Wants to know, and funny because we opened up the show with this game because it was just such hot ass on so many levels. Uh, and one of the most disgusting games on the card here tonight. But it doesn't mean that there's not value. Certainly, I would guess, in the prop betting market. Uh, wants to know whether Mobley going over on points or Garland. Uh, I, I would say both because they're playing a G League team here tonight. One way or the other, this thing is now 19 points there, uh, Joey. I would look... I mean, Mobley's got a huge matchup advantage here in this game here tonight, whether it be points, whether it be rebounds, uh, some combination of both there. I think Mobley has his way here tonight. Uh, I know you can hell even for him to hit a three or something along those lines. It's a huge matchup advantage from Mobley tonight. Uh, Garland is going to get his, but my problem with Garland is uh, we'll see how long uh, he goes here. Might be more interested in getting everyone else involved. BP, this is in your backyard here. You think uh, Mobley has the bigger night or Garland against this G League team? Uh, I would look at Mobley, points, rebounds, and assists. That number was 27 and a half, I know, earlier. It was something I was looking at mm. uh, while, break, while looking at this game. He's gone over that number 65% of the time this season, so... You know, wow. if you think, all right, you, you, you get a little nervous, like, well, you know, the points total, how about throw some rebounds and assists in there? Again, I mean, Memphis, just to illustrate what kind of skeleton crew they've been throwing out there, guys, they had the league minimum eight guys active now for three straight games. They have 12, or I can't remember if it's 12 or 13 guys on the injury list. That's just insane. Yeah. But, um, you know, and, and here's the thing, too. When Mobley, when the Cavs win, Mobley's PRA obviously goes up even further. Uh, so yes. I, that's the way I would look at that. I mean, that's quite logical. So I would look over PRA for Evan Mobley in this game if you're looking at a Cavs prop. Yeah, I, I am with you 100% on that. Uh, good luck, Joey. Hope that works out. Appreciate it. Also, uh, Travio22 in uh, on our YouTube uh, shorts chat room there, Merrill. Wants to know uh, what we think about Toronto. Beautiful city. Uh, I do believe uh, there is legalized casinos there, so that's also fantastic. Uh, oh, you mean about a basketball game? Yeah, no, Toronto, what are we thinking here, uh, Merrill, against Brooklyn tonight? I'm seeing, what, 11 and a half, 12s popping up across the board. You and We've talked about this, right? Both of these teams, quite honestly, uh, have tea times made. Uh, a couple of cruises booked. Uh, so what do you do when we get uh, to this point here at this season with these two teams? Yeah, I mean, we're talking about a Brooklyn team that is, I believe, lost, what is it, nine of their last 14. They're five and nine straight up their last 14. And we're asking them not only to win, but to win by double digits. With that said, though, a, a lot of the losses have been against good teams. In fact, they've been an underdog in um, five of their last six games. The only time they were favored, they were a double-digit 10-point favorite against Detroit, and they beat them by 10 a couple nights ago on the 6th, uh, four days ago. Uh, they were also a four-point favorite at Washington, one by three, six points against Toronto back at the end of March and one by eight. So they have been winning by margin when favored. So I would lean that way tonight for that reason. The other reason I would lean towards Brooklyn is because they were in an embarrassed spot against Sacramento on Sunday. They scored 77 points. They lost by 30. That was at home. Not sure there's a ton of fans this time of year, but still, it's another home game now with two days off after arguably their worst showing of the season, especially offensively when they shot just 35%. I'm sure their focus is on the offensive end tonight, so a Brooklyn team total probably is not a bad way to approach it because I think it's going to be all offense tonight for the Nets because this game is meaningless. They're not going to care about D, but they sure as hell are going to want to score more than 77 points like they did the other night. Yeah, I, I don't hate that look at all. BP, how about you there? Uh, are you looking uh, somewhere in this game for points, points? I mean, we're not really going to get any defense. Are we here tonight? No. 
No, it's to that point. I like Toronto's yeah. team total over. This is one of those games that mm. I was talking You know, it, it's a big underdog with an extremely low team total. The number is one. Uh, it's been, I've been up to 105 and a half, 105, one, shop around there. You look, I mean, Toronto, okay, they're a bad team, but they average 112.7 points per game for the season. They average 115 on the road. They're actually better offensively on the road. They play at a pretty fast pace, you know, top third of the league in pace. And, you know, this is a game where two teams are out of it. Steve Mitch and Brooklyn might have a little pride after the horrible loss to Sacramento they took the other night. So this could just be an up-and-down affair. Uh, so I would, I'd be a little leery about laying this many points with a Brooklyn team that obviously has nothing to play for. So, yeah, I, I think the be- better than taking the point, taking the, the spread with Toronto would be playing them over their team total. That way, if they play no defense whatsoever and they get smoked, you've still got a chance. Again, 104 and a half. 105, 105, whatever it may be, depending on your book, is not a large number. It's not like Brooklyn's a defensive stalwart, guys. They give up 114 uh, points per game for the year. So I think Toronto can get to 105, 106 without an issue. It's funny, too, because didn't I believe these two teams played about a played last month, in fact, and that the game landed under 200 points. Uh, but I don't think we're going to get that kind of situation here uh, tonight. So full game over. I, just any sort of combination of overs as these guys are going to be laughing as they're running up and down the court here tonight. Don't forget, those of you joining us here uh, live today on uh, on our live stream, whether it be on Instagram, YouTube Shorts, or YouTube uh, X, we certainly appreciate you hanging with us here today. Don't forget to hit that subscribe or the like button. Uh, we would certainly appreciate the support. You guys rock as we try to make heads or tails of another one of these hot ass cards tonight uh, in the last week of the regular season for the NBA. And it is brutal, but got to bring up my Miami Heat and uh I think if we say it three times in a row S. Warrior shows up in the chat room. Uh so Miami Heat, Miami Heat, my well not a hell with it. Nobody wants him in there. Uh so let's talk about this team double overtime last night taking on Dallas at home here tonight and Merrill you, you said it. You, you started to show up with it and you've said it now seating matters. Uh, Miami in a spot where they're in all likelihood a play-in game, but you want to be a road team or you want to be the home team in any sort of playoff game uh, with one win and you're in. So what do you think about uh, Miami here tonight? No Duncan Robinson. That was the latest I saw. Uh, And it looks like Tyler Hero and Rozier both questionable. But this is a pretty big stretch here for the Heat. We talked about it yesterday. We said we expected Rozier and everyone to go last night because they didn't want to lose that game against Atlanta. I don't see him wanting to lose this game either here. So what do you think we get with the Mavericks and the Heat tonight? Yeah, the Mavericks are fifth, but they're, like Brian said, they're basically locked into fifth. They'd have to win out. The Clippers would probably have to lose out for them to move up one way or the other. So it's really not important for Dallas. With that said, Dallas is playing like their lives are on the line. They've been the hottest team in the NBA now for several weeks. Uh, They've won 11 of their last 12 straight up. Going even further back, they've won uh, 16 of their last 18 straight up. They're 16 and two, I believe. I'm sorry, no, not 16 and two. Let me add it up real quick. Six, 11. They're like 14 and two, I think, their last 16 against the spread. Um, pure money makers. I get a free play solo video yesterday here on the NBA show. The early edition in the morning, one of the two games I gave out here was Dallas minus the 13 on the road. They blew out Charlotte by 26. So not a team you want to get in front of, but I really don't feel like they have much to play for tonight. But then again, Miami's been kind of up and down all season as well. Miami is playing better basketball. They've won four of their last six straight up, four one and one against the spread. These are two teams, Joe, that probably should be two of the better teams in each conference. They've underachieved all season, but it sure looks like they're turning it on come playoff time like they should. We know Miami, of course, made that run all the way to the finals from the play-in game, so they probably don't care. And they've got to leapfrog a hot Philadelphia team and still make up a couple games to get to number six. So just a game I'd be careful with overall. I will point out Miami's been on a nice overrun, seven straight overs, and Dallas has gone over uh, back-to-back games as well. So even though it's a, it's a no rest for both teams, you think maybe they slow it down tonight. Uh, over's been pretty good money, yet we saw a lot of sharp money coming in the under. It's dropped it from 218.5 down to 215.5 today. I'm kind of shocked right now that we uh, no Luca or Kyrie on the – 
initial injury report here, BP, which I think is kind of interesting. But, you know, again, this time of year, just because somebody's not on the report doesn't mean they're guaranteed to play. I would keep let's, you know, hello. Uh, We've seen that how many times now over the last uh, week and a half? So uh, it's not a great spot for Miami. We know that a double OT against Atlanta. All things being equal, everyone plays. Jimmy's on, uh, Luca's on, Kyrie, everyone plays here. And this number hovering around two now, the total was down as low as 212 and a half, 213. I am seeing, to Steve's point, back to 215 and a half, maybe even 216. So uh, there are some, a lot of indicators to think that maybe less defense, more points. Uh, but boy, oh boy, I would hate to be holding an over ticket and tip off comes and everyone's got a hemorrhoid, their ass hurts, nobody's playing, and everyone mails it in. That would that would bother me here. How are you approaching it? Uh, yeah, yeah, that would bother a lot of people, I think. And, but you took mm-hmm. the words out of my mouth, Joe, that, yep. you know, with no Luka and no Kyrie on the injury report now, doesn't it feel like this could be one of those things where you, you know, you, you – we we're done with the show. We go do something. Then we log, log back on social media and 20 people 100%. are cursing the Dallas Mavericks because <laughs> they, they decided mm-hmm. that they don't want to play. Yep. Miami's team total looks low at 107 and a half, but they only scored 101 in regulation yesterday. Remember, they scored 117 with 10 extra minutes of basketball. So once again, the team yep. total market might be how I would attack this one. Miami under 107 and a half because you know there is some uncertainty with Dallas you would yeah like like you said Joe you'd hate to be holding an over ticket and then either Luca or Kyrie says hey you know uh, you know see in the playoffs so let's just look at Miami I I you know again 107 and a half under is how I would look this one this is a team that only scored 101 in regulation against the Hawks not a noted Mm. defensive stalwart by any means yeah, this is uh, this is a mess. Uh, but again, I would be 100 percent sure uh, who the hell is playing in this game, even if it meant tip off. And quite honestly, I don't think it's a bad idea to let the game start and jump in live uh, because I think we can all agree here. But you're going to be able to get these numbers, I think, within uh, a couple of minutes there at, after they tip off. So. I would just hold off and wait. Uh, Luca Baby, 77, joining us uh, in our YouTube shorts, hanging out on a uh, cell phone. And we appreciate that, Luca Baby. <laughs> is he playing? Uh, I'll give you three Ask guesses as playing, to who Joe. he's betting on here. No, no, he already knows. It's the only reason he's not playing the game is because he's a little worried that they already locked up the five seed. They're in the West. What the hell does this game mean to Dallas? And that's exactly uh, the problem here. But... I'm going to judge by the name here. His question was originally, everyone seems to be saying the Joker is winning the MVP, but he's making a pretty strong case that Luca's odds right now in that spot for an MVP here. What are you thinking, uh, BP? Luca, uh, to overtake the Joker, aren't we at the point where we're getting Joker fatigue right now? Over the last couple, right? I mean, isn't this the point where the voters are like, oh, God, we got to give it to somebody else here? Why not, Luca? Well, hell of a turnaround here. Uh, you know, it's a, first of all, I want to comment about your live betting, uh, what you said about live betting. I mean, that's just the yes. rule, I think, with the NBA. Look at so- what happened on Sunday, guys. Didn't like three teams that weren't covering in all of regulation were down by 20, come back and cover the number in overtime? It's insane. So, I mean, live betting is something we should put over here on the show. Always a good option in the NBA. Um, as far as this MVP market goes, Joe, I would have to see how many times a player from a five seed won it that I agree with your comment on fatigue, right? That was always the thing. Mm. Jo- everyone always says, why didn't Jordan win more MVPs? And I don't disagree with that. People said, why didn't LeBron win more MVPs? I don't disagree yep. with that. And there, there is a sense of fatigue where they try to find somebody else. There isn't that obvious answer though. And again, I, I would have to see, like look at it historically, how many times would a player on a five seed have won the regular season MVP. I can't think it's too many. And, you know, Steve talked about Dallas and, and its incredible surge we've seen in the second half. This team's 23-8 and eight against the number. It's last 31 games, though, by the way. That kind of coincides with Kyrie getting healthy as well. So I, I don't know. I don't think I'd be running to the window to bet. Luca. I mean, if you're, 
you know, if your name in the chat is Luca Baby seventy seven, and you just have some change laying around and want to do it for fun, okay, no. uh, you know, there's worse, there's I worse agree. uses of your money. But you, you know, yes. I, I, I would be, I don't know if he's going to win it. To be honest with you, as a five, as a player on a five seed. Yeah, I, listen, uh, it's uh, something tells me there's not a lot of bias there with uh, Luca Baby 77, not at all. Uh, but if you happen to hear anything about whether he's playing or Kyrie, uh, let us know if you uh, if you would here. He is literally averaging a triple double. And yes, uh, it, you know, I don't think you can go wrong throwing a couple of bucks on him there for MVP here. Uh, one other game that we seem to be getting, uh, and it looks like I, I, OKC, Merrill, they're laying 17 and a half now. We know that uh, Webayam is out, Kelton Johnson's out, Vassal, so everyone's out, but it feels like everyone's been out and they're still covering every game down the stretch here, and nobody gives them any. I mean, how they were a favorite last night, and still they won and covered last night. So they have been a money-making machine, kind of like what OKC was a year ago until everyone started betting them and there was no more value there. Uh, SGA looks like he's going to go, but man, 17, 17 and a half for OKC, who's trying to stay healthy heading into the playoffs. What do you think? Well, I'm glad you brought up SGA because I was doing some research here. If you look at Plus minus like points allowed, points against points for points against per 100 possessions when a guy's on or off the court this year. Luca's like plus 19, and Doncic is like plus 17. So Luca is a little more important based on that metric. But guess who else is plus 17? Is SGA? Uh, he because he should be in that mix as well. I think for MVP. So uh, really, for maybe our three of the best. Um, Halliburton, by the way, we talked about how bad their patients were without him. They're pl he's plus 11 and a half. So he's another very underrated player. Um, Anthony Edwards plus 10. So Jokic probably is the MVP. Um, and Bede is up there as well. We've seen obviously the Sixers play better. He's plus 19, 18.8. So it's probably Embiid or Jokic if you're looking for the most important player on a team. And lo and behold, they've been the MVP. So I think for the most part, the voters have gotten it right. But like you guys said, they usually like to try to spice it up. So I think SGA or Doncic would be the next two logical choices if they want something new and fresh. Um, as far as Oklahoma City, you know, the way they're playing, you wouldn't think they're still continuing for that number one overall seed. Uh, I believe last I checked, they're like a game back still. They actually briefly had it in the yeah. past week. Um, so they have plenty to play for. But then again, winning and winning by more than 17 are two different things. They don't need to win by 18 to get another win in the in the one loss column. Um, historically speaking, though, if you're going to play these double digit games late in the season, you want to play the better team and lay it. And I do think they have motivation to show up tonight. With that said, though, San Antonio, and Teddy pointed this out, not all big, ugly ass underdogs, as you like to say, Joe, are created equal. Not all mm. ass is created equal in April. Point. We all know that. A lot of truth. And um, yep. San Antonio's been actually one of those bottom feeders who's been a lot better here over the last few weeks. Um, first of all, they're respectable four and three straight up their last seven. More importantly, um, they're six and one ATS their last seven. And they've, uh, they've covered, I believe, eight of their last 11. So... It's a big number here. I do look for a focus spot from OKC, but they've only covered once their last six. So OKC mm. wins, San Antonio covers, maybe a little 17-point middle. You can lay the, um, what's the price? Lay the 1,700 on the money line and then take the plus 17 minus 110. Let's catch a middle. <laughs> I, I, I'm i with you here, uh, Merrill. Uh, also, we need to get that on a shirt at some point that uh, not no, all ass is created, is created <laughs> equal with an American uh, flag and the declaration of independence. Absolutely on each side of that fantastic. Yeah. And by the way, I know they were asking in the chat, web is out. So, uh, yeah, so is most of the rest of the team, but 17 is just to, uh, it's an obnoxious uh, number across uh, the board here. All right, let's take uh, one more look here just to make sure we haven't missed anything. Uh, are any of us believing that Denver should be laying six against a finally healthy Minnesota Timberwolves that, by the way, just learned that Cat should be back a little bit later this week here, BP, from what I understand. Carl uh, Anthony Towns looks like uh, he should be ready to join them. And this is, outside of him, pretty much the healthiest we have seen Minnesota Going to Denver, does the game matter more to Minnesota or to Denver? Uh, or do you think neither really gives a crap? Just don't get anybody hurt. 
Well, I mean, you know, we're talking about the number one seed in the Western Conference. All the playoff probabilities say it's going to be one of these teams. Interesting, you look back, the T-Wolves are 3-0 and against the number, against the Nuggets this year. They won on this very court not that long ago, about two weeks ago, as a similarly priced. I think they were a six, they closed as a six-point underdog. They won by double digits. Now they're healthier. I think Minnesota should probably care more about finishing number one than Denver would. Denver's been there before. I don't think they would be worried about having to go to Minnesota in the playoffs, whereas Minnesota, I think, would certainly want the home court advantage in a potential conference final against the Nuggets if they are able to get there. So it would be dog or pass for me on this one. And just one more final note on San Antonio, who we talked about there in that last segment. The only game San Antonio didn't cover in the last eight was the aforementioned game on Sunday where they led throughout in regulation and then Philadelphia came back and bit them in double overtime. So you'd have to go back yeah. to March 23rd to find the last time the Spurs failed to cover a game in regulation. Just I wanted to add that uh, to the discussion of San Antonio. It reminds me, uh, BP, Swamp Ass uh, has been uh, used in the chat room a couple of times. I definitely think Swamp Ass is part of the <laughs> ass family of games that we have gotten in the NBA. I think it does cover a few of the games here tonight. That's a uh, that's a great way to uh, to look at them here. Uh, but uh, Merrill, we'll get you out of here. Uh, Timberwolves and Nuggets. What are you thinking here, man? Well, I've also heard the the term prime prime grade A ass, right? Wouldn't that be this game? Oh, I yes. mean, come on now. The, the, no, the yes. teams are tied for the best record yes. in the West. So this is prime class A, yes. USDA, whatever prime mm-hmm. need is. Um, what's yep. interesting, though, is if Minnesota does win, like Brian said, they would have had won three of the four. They'd be a game up with the tiebreakers. So basically, Minnesota wins tonight. They're going to get the number one seed. So it is a huge game for that reason. But then again, they, they beat Denver two out of three. They just beat them in Denver in the most recent meeting. I, I would think the Nuggets are going to have some pride here as well. If it has a true playoff atmosphere, I think the under should have some value. It opened 213 and a half. It's down to 211 and a half now. And I think that move makes sense. Um, I think both teams bring this class A playoff intensity tonight. Mm. Should be a good game to watch at 10 o'clock Eastern. Yeah, we, we're hit. top tier ass has been thrown out. Uh, that's where this game <laughs> we uh, will certainly <laughs> we'll uh, cover it. here. We uh, prime grade A ass for catch you slipping. Also, an agree. Oh, uh, Eric's coming thinking. in over the top with Kobe beef ass. Now that is wow. some expensive ass. That's right right there. There. That, that is, a, that that is yeah. the ass. Yeah, it's, yeah, that's, yeah and it's that's free range. pretty free range ass. quality. Uh, quality <laughs> yeah. here. Uh, We've covered just about all the ass there is tonight in the NBA, and there is plenty of it. Uh, And like Merrill said, not all ass is created the same here. Uh, But there are a handful of games, guys, that look like uh, there's still some value there across the board. uh, And Miami and Dallas coming up, uh, Orlando and Milwaukee, and of course, Minnesota and Denver. And we all agree that none of us want anything to do with any ass from Phoenix at this point, uh, because they just can't be trusted on any level except early in the game. Merrill, before we get you out of here, tell the fine folks here that are joining and are hitting the subscribe button and the like button for us in the chat rooms, uh, tell them what you got locked, loaded, ready to roll a wager talk. Yeah, look, there's 16 NBA sides in totals tonight. Many of them are ass. I don't disagree with that. But there mm-hmm. are two out of the 16, which I think have class A material, money-making material, and that's what it's all about. Because as we all know, ass costs money. So make some money tonight with my two <laughs> NBA best bets. One side, mm-hmm. one yep. total. And oh, by the way, I am ranked number one this year in the NBA sides and totals combined. No one's won more in the NBA this year. And I'm number one all time at Wager Talk on sides, which make up about 93% of my plays. But I do have a rare total going tonight as well. One side, one total. Number one ranked NBA continues. Get them each for 25, get them both for just 29, or the best deal the rest of the NBA season, plus all of the playoffs through the finals, two months for just 188. That is a great value. No promo code needed. And oh, by the way, a free baseball play tonight also. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. All right. Now that was uh that was quality. Quality ass there, BP. We all uh We're all getting out the baby powder. We know what kind of ass you're going to bring us right now. So tell us, uh, what exactly uh, are you locked and loaded with here tonight at Wager Talk? 
Yeah, uh, with the uh, ass being the theme on the show today, <laughs> only apropos, Joe, that I would close things out here. Uh, I do have a best bet in the National Basketball Association. Mm-hmm. Just one play. It is a team totals. We look to continue rolling with those. Again, I think that's the market to attack this final week of the regular season. I found a lot of success so far. We're hitting 80% in April in the NBA, 60% overall. All NBA plays going back to last year's finals. We had a great playoffs last year. We're going to hope to duplicate that again. But first, we have a little bit of damage to do here in the regular season. So hop on over wt.buzz backslash BP for tonight's best bet. And just one more time, uh, we have a couple of guys coming in late. Make America Great Again wants to know, what happened to the contrarian play of the day? Oh, we gave it. Oh, we gave it. And Merrill, uh, you were the one that uh, that said it loud and proud. So where is the contrarian play tonight? Yeah, a couple of things. First of all, I thought Make America Great was going to be another one of our ass slogans for a T-shirt. So I was very disappointed yeah, yes. that it was his handle. <laughs> But um, yeah, so that's fantastic. Yeah. Go back, watch the beginning of the show for the contrarian play. It's the Memphis Cleveland game, and it might not be what you think it is. The uh, the public is actually all over the Grizzlies. The line has gone three points higher, though, and the sharp books have now gone to 19 versus 18 and a half. So Cleveland, biggest favorite of the season is a contrarian play of the day. And I don't think I'm on the NBA live show tomorrow. I'm doing the pre tape in the morning, I believe. Actually, no, I am doing the live tomorrow, I think. Anyway, we'll find out. I'll find out. I've got a poll question for tomorrow, Joe. Could UConn yes. beat the Memphis Grizzlies? I knew this was coming after UConn's Ooh. dominance. We get this every decade or oh. so, right, Brian? It's always, what would the point spread be? And oh. then the odds makers tell you the worst NBA team would be a 20-point favorite. I don't know. Oh. Would the Grizzlies be a 20-point favorite with eight guys against UConn? Think about that one for tomorrow. I want that as the, uh, the viewer question for tomorrow's show. That, well, there would no doubt uh, be value in that one. Uh, so we've got, uh, we're out of here, guys. Big shout out. Great. A, uh, what was it? A uh, Raven Ron need a great A ass lock tonight. We've already given you a couple of dolls. Uh, Eric is suggesting <laughs> gold bond uh, BP gold bond powder oh, uh, will help with that yeah. swamp <laughs> ass. You're going to be rolling here uh, tonight. And don't forget, that, guys, we do have in the comments, uh, in the uh, not just in the comment section, but in the description uh, we have links to all of the standalone games, uh, previews, best bets from around wager talk. Go check those out if there's a certain game you are interested in. But don't forget, hit that like button, uh, hit the subscribe button. We certainly appreciate you taking the time out once again. Join us uh, tomorrow. We'll be back in another edition of the NBA Afternoon Update. I think you guys are starting to figure out why we need an afternoon update in the NBA because uh, things are changing and they are changing quickly. Either way. Best of luck. Appreciate all the ass talk today. We'll see you again tomorrow. Good luck tonight, guys. We'll talk to you soon.